Let me ask you this, are you not looking for a good build? And don't you wish that that good build could be very, very cheap? Well, Papa Rogue has got you covered. This video is part of a playlist that's gonna show you every single cheap build that is worth getting into. And we're not talking about builds that are worth like 500k or 250k or even 100k. We're talking about builds that are all around 50k silver. 50k! You get that by killing one boss in this game. Or maybe a bunch of mobs. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Alright, sure. Let me show you one of my favorite PvE builds. Honestly, this is incredibly good. And you will fall in love with it as well. Check it out. It goes like this. Scholar Cow, third spell, first passive. Mercenary Jacket, third spell, first passive. Hunter Shoes, second spell, second passive. Now, this is a very important thing that I keep repeating in every single video that I make like this. I think it's gonna become a meme on the channel. Because, <laughs> to be honest, I'm always using Hunter Shoes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should really check out the other build guides that I made from the same playlist of this video. Because I'm always using Hunter Shoes. And I'm always saying the following. You do not need to specifically use Hunter Shoes. You can use any single Leather Shoe. Because every single Leather Shoe has the same second F ability. So it doesn't matter the tier. It doesn't matter the... I don't know. Nothing. Every single Leather Shoe have the same second F. So you can always use whatever you want to spec up. Personally, I just have max spec in Hunter Shoes. So why not use Hunter Shoes, you know? Adept's Great Axe. Second Q. Second W, first passive. Just a plain old normal cape that you can replace with loads of things. Some poison potions, always bring more than you think you need. And cabbage soup, which again you can replace with a lot of things. Before I tell you exactly what you can replace with what, let me first show you how this build goes and how each ability works. First of all, let's start with the Q. This Q works as a damage dealer and as a debuff. Basically, you do a lot of damage based on the distance that you are from your enemy. So let's say if you're fighting this, if you attack it like this, you're gonna do a certain amount of damage. But if you attack it like this, like on the edge of that circle, I'm just gonna be spamming Qs so you see exactly what I mean, you're gonna do an increased amount of damage nearly double. Like check it out, from 2.5 meters 160 damage and from 5 meters 242. That is great, that is great. Not really double, but at least 50% stronger. This ability basically is your main spammable. You just wanna go and spam it as much as you can. You're gonna apply stacks to your enemies, you're just gonna, you know, spin around, basically, spin around. And talking about spinning, I cannot wait to get to the E, but we get there in a second. And over all of that, this also applies a debuff that reduces the healing of your enemy. So if you're fighting, uh, let's say, in PvP against a healer, this could be very, very useful. Though in PvP, you need to switch this Q, but we're gonna get there in a second. The second ability is a damage buff and a move speed buff. Basically, whenever you press it, you're gonna move faster and you're gonna do more damage. How much faster? Well, by 40%. And how much damage? By 25%. And also, you're gonna get an attack speed bonus of 40% for up to 7 seconds. In PvE, this is mainly used as an engage. Like, let's say you have a bunch of enemies right there, you just activate this, and then you do the next ability, which is the E. This just does an insane amount of damage. But you need to think of this as mainly doing two things. First of all, it does a lot of damage. And second of all, it drains your energy up like crazy. Check it out. Look at my energy bar. And that's just from the E. It might not seem like much, but as you squeeze in Qs and Ws and attacking and stuff like that, you're gonna be left with no energy very, very quickly. And because this has a very, very low cooldown, like look at just look, just look at the average rotation. And that is exactly why you have the rest of your abilities, especially this one. Let's look at this. Let's say I want to engage a pack of mobs right now, but I'm already at under half mana, mana under half energy. So you need to recharge this. That is exactly why you have this. And don't worry, I'm not skipping the Bloodlust ability, but I just want to get to this because this is best paired with uh, this E. Like, best explained alongside with this E. What this does... Okay, two things. It reduces the amount of damage you take because it gives you armor and magic resistance. And every single time you take damage while you have this shield active, you gain energy back. It kind of works like Bloodlust in a way. Uh, this doesn't give you resistance or armor, but... 
it gives you healing every single time you're being attacked. So this gives you health every single time you're being attacked. Well, this gives you energy every single time you're being attacked. Talking about Bloodlust, because I've also referenced it. Well, this does exactly the same thing as the D, except that it's totally different. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't give you energy and it doesn't give you resistance, but it gives you HP every single time you attack. But it's actually completely opposite. Because, like, for this one you need to be attacked, for this one you need to attack. This one gives you energy, this one gives you health. This one does give you armor, this one does not give you armor. This is a buff. Well, I guess no, this is also a buff. You yeah, know, this is kind of also a buff, yeah. Okay, that's the only similar thing. And DF just reduces your cooldowns while makes you run much faster than you would normally. Basically, the normal rotation with this build would be just spam Qs all the time, as much as you can. And whenever you want to melt things, just do this, W, D, E, and just melt things. The mobs will attack you while you're doing this, and you will gain your uh, energy back. You do not need to use your D uh, like that, like necessarily as you're engaging the mobs. You can use it after you've done like two to three engages and you're already kind of out of energy. But make sure you don't forget to use it, because this is really important. Or if you're finding a tougher pack of mobs, you could just go. Squeeze in some Qs until they all have like 3 stacks and the reason I used my F was so I'm able to do Qs faster and then do W, R and E. Alternatively you could also pop in a D if you need to do it over there. Alright, now let me show you what you need to swap for specific situations. Again, I'm gonna spread this thing into two main categories, PvP situations and PvE situations. Let's first start with PvE situations as this is much easier to, to manage. Basically, if you only want to focus on PvE, because this build works just as fine for PvE or PvP. So if you don't want to PvP and you know that for a fact, and you just want to focus on PvE, this is getting confusing, <laughs> but let me show you exactly what you need to swap to make this even more efficient. First of all, the jacket needs to go and it needs to be replaced by Spectre Jacket. Spectre Jacket is incredible for PvE. Second thing, you need to replace the, I mean you don't need it, but you should replace the cape with either Demon Cape for bosses or Tedford Cape. If I were you, I would strongly suggest you go with, to be honest, I think Demon Cape. Yeah, I think I would go with Demon Cape. But it depends, because adding special capes or changing the jacket will also increase the price of the build. Yes, it would make the build work like a charm in PvE. It's one of my favorite solo dungeon builds but it would cost much more. At the moment, the build is worth 42k. I mean, if you want to keep it at 42k, then you should keep it like this. If you're changing the cape, that adds up like 150k at least. So you're gonna pay for this build 190k just by changing the cape. The Spectre jacket is pretty expensive, so you don't need to worry about that. The food can remain absolutely the same, or you can replace it with... Uh, no, I mean in solo dungeons, no, you shouldn't replace it, especially if you're running with Spectre Jacket. If you're running with Mercenary Jacket, then you might be able to replace it with a Beef Stew, or it would be a good idea to have a Beef Stew with you in case you're struggling with a certain boss, but it, it does make a pretty significant difference. And now if you're looking for PvP, well, there's a bunch of things that you need to change. First of all, this needs to go. This is useless in PvP, you need to replace this with the uh, Mage Cow. That would be the best option for you, or... Clary Cow, something that either gives you a lot of resistance, oh, Hunter Hood could work very well, or something that helps you do even more damage. I would go with Mage Cow, that would be my, my go-to option. The next thing that you need to replace, uh, I think it's the Q and you need the, you need the higher tier Grade X for that and check it out. If you go with, I think tier 5 has it, no, tier 6. You need to go with tier 6, you need this W, uh, this Q, sorry. I mean, you don't need it necessarily, but you want to have it if you have access to it. It's a very good W. It might also work for PvE, to be honest. I like this more because it's more mindless, <laughs> but this might work better, to be honest. This basically just allows you to do more queues, uh, and each queue does something different. I mean, no, the first two queues do uh, something similar, they just do damage, the third queue just roots your enemy. It's not bad, it's not bad. But I, I like this one for PvE as it's just more brain dead, <laughs> basically. The jacket needs to go, you need to replace this with either Hellion jacket uh, or um, Cleric robe. that could work, yeah. If you replace this with Hellion jacket, then I strongly suggest you replace your helmet not with Mage Cow, though it would work, but with Spectre Hood, that would work amazing. 
if you go with this combo, then I suggest you go with Matlo Cape, so like uh, Spectre Hood, Hellion Jacket, Matlo Cape. If you go with Clary Grove, then you should go with Tedford Cape. Uh, for food, you want to be using either Pork Hommels or Beef Stew. I think Beef Stew would be the superior option. And just play no normal poisons. Oh, and as for the shoes, you might want to replace this with Soldier Boots so you have Wanderlust, which is one of the best running abilities in the game that you can use to either chase or to run away from somebody chasing you. And because you have this W, you know that Wanderlust, even though it's one of the best getaway abilities, it ramps up kinda slowly, like you don't just press it and boom, you rocket ship out the fight. No, you go a little bit slow, you start from slow, a little bit faster, a little, little bit faster, then you start becoming a rocket. Well, think about it like this, you slow, let's say I'm activating Wanderlust right now, and I'm slow, I'm slow, I'm slow, but if I'm pairing it with W, I'm not that slow anymore. And by the time the W gets over, I'm already a rocket ship. This is a very good escape combo, and because of the fact that they have uh, such low cooldowns, like all of the abilities have such low cooldowns, you can just use them pretty much whenever you want to. Like you can probably manage to use this W as an engage, and if the fight goes south, you can also probably get it back by the time you want to use it as a disengage. So that's great. But enough of me talking about this build, let me actually show it to you in action. Here's why this is my favorite PvE build. Let me melt those guys real quick. Woo! This is so satisfying. Like, th this is ASMR in Albion Online. I'm gonna be honest. This is ASMR. Like, you just melt mobs. This is why I love the Great Axe, man. My all time favorite PvE build. And I know I showed it multiple times, but hey! Deal with it. <laughs> oh. No, I'm joking. But for real, like, it's such a good build. Like, a lot more people need to know about it. I should wait a little bit to get my, my D. Maybe next time. I mean, let me just kill one of those. Uh, I was looking for a boss, but at the same time, why not also kill those guys? If I can. By the way, I... Okay, perfect. For a second, I was worried that I might have auto respect turned on. That would mess up the results a lot. <laughs> like, not good. But I didn't. So that's great. So satisfying. Oh, man. So satisfying. Oh, an enchanted tier 7 bomb. Not bad at all. Oh, do I need to get out of the AoE? Yeah. Should I throw a pot? I mean, I don't feel like I need it, but I want to kill it fast. So nobody ganks me. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Alright. Oh, look at this, look at this. Another pack. And I have my E back somehow. Alright, that's great. I appreciate that. Not bad. Thank you so much for watching this video. We truly appreciate you. If you want to see more, click this video over here. Or if you want to see even more than that, well, I have great news. We have two new channels. We have a reviews channel in case you want to see a review of the game that you just watched. Or a clips channel in case you want to watch something while on the toilet. Hey, it's no shame in that. Everybody poops, alright? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you all tomorrow.